SDTV News. Fort Collins City Council has made history recently for the largest female majority governing body in the state. And if you missed it, we have information about the pink moon that took place only a few short nights ago. All that and more on CTV News, starting now. Good evening, Rams. I'm Aspen Flores, and I'll be your news anchor for tonight. Welcome back. It's been a few weeks since we've been on air, but it's good to be back in the studio. We have quite the show for you tonight, so I'll get right into it. Fort Collins City Council has made history recently by electing the most significant female majority governing body of any Colorado municipality. Just recently, the city chose a new mayor as well as three new council members. The new mayor, Jenny Arndt, as well as city council members, Tricia Cananico, Kelly Olson, and Shirley Peel were sworn in on Tuesday, April 28th. This was the first in-person meeting to happen in months as COVID has caused restrictions on that possibility. While at the meeting, the new council unanimously named Emily Gorgel as mayor pro term. However, the night was bittersweet as the city said farewell to the now former Mayor Wade Troxell, Mayor Pro Term Ross Kuniff, and Council Member Ken Summers and Melanie Padiondi. Also happening Tuesday night was the city's Board of Education meeting. Poudre School District announced that it plans to open the fall semester completely in person. The elementary school will reopen for five days a week with classes, whereas the preschool will be in person for a total of four days each week. As of now, masks will still be required. However, Assistant Superintendent for Elementary Schools, Tracy Guile, says she hopes and anticipates that protocols will change. Students who want to continue remote learning will still have that option, although it will be through Pooter Global Academy. Fort Collins Utilities released a statement recently regarding a water shortage that the town is currently experiencing due to the impact of the Cameron Peak fire. Fort Collins has gone into an anticipated low quality water shortage. The city plans to begin watching the water usage levels starting April 29th and, depending on the resulting statistics, may implement a mandatory restriction. Some ways to limit your water intake is by reducing how often you water your lawn as well as the timing of when you water it, not between the hours of 10 in the morning and 6 in the evening. Next semester is gearing up to look like a good one. However, if you want to end up being a part of it, CSU is going to require a few things from you first. News anchor Weston Hubbard tells us more. After almost a year of chaos with COVID-19, things may start to look like they're going back to normal. For instance, we may see CSU start to go back in person next semester. However, there will be a catch that you'll need to be aware of. For CSU Fort Collins, as well as CSU Pueblo, is going to be required that everybody has a COVID-19 vaccination. This includes faculty, staff, as well as the students. These requirements will be made finalized on May 6th after the Board of Governors of the CSU System will meet, according to the CSU System Chancellor, Tony Frank, who announced this earlier this week, along with the new requirements. The decision was made after looking at the science that goes into COVID-19, as well as the vaccines, and believing it is the safest and most clear and compelling option for the students and faculty in order to make sure that everybody is going to be safe. CSU is hoping with this announcement being made now, this gives the family, friends, and anyone else who is a part of CSU the opportunity to make sure that they can go get a vaccine. And for the ability for anybody that is 16 years old or above to be able to get one now, it is clear that they are really pushing for the opportunity for everybody to get vaccinated ASAP. As of right now, it looks like CSU will be sticking to this plan, but if anything changes on May 6th at the Board of the Governor's meeting, or if any announcement is made before then, we will make sure to keep you updated on the situation as it develops. If you want more information on how you can get a COVID vaccine, you can go to LarimerCounty.org slash health. Well, Rams, that's all we have for the news, but stay tuned after the break because Zaya will be giving us the end of the week weather report. 